You're listening to 102.5 The Vine, faith, hope, and community encouraging music as we continue our round of pastors today to get words of encouragement from our leaders of churches all over the sweet spot. We've been to Hammett, we've been to Murrieta, we've been to Temecula, and we're going to Temecula again for Reliance Church here with Pastor Ted Leavenworth. Hello. Hey, Pastor Ted, it's Doc from The Vine. Hey, Doc, how you doing? I'm well, how are you? Uh, I'm doing well, thank you. Good, I'm so glad to hear that. Uh, I, I assume you're staying at home today. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, I am. I actually have some uh, some uh, messages that I uh, need to record, um, which thankfully we are allowed to do. But uh, yeah, for 99.9 percent of what I do is from the house. Nice. Well, that's uh, that works out. So we're doing a round of of uh, having our leaders from our churches on the air today, just to encourage people and to kind of get a scope of uh, what's going on at different churches. Is because you know some people who go to church, they that's their life. They're in that church and they don't understand what's going on elsewhere. And also maybe some folks at your church would just love to hear the encouragement today. So I'd love to start with uh, just kind of seeing what uh, what Reliance is doing for. Um, COVID-19 and and how you're, you know, taking care of your congregation, how you're getting words out. Sure. Um, well, uh, I guess I would start by um, just, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that the Lord had us already uh, with a pretty robust uh, online platform. And, uh, and so that allowed us to respond to this crisis, you know, with an infrastructure that was for the most part in place. We had to expand it and that required a little bit of, you know, logistical work, but um, connecting with our people online and transitioning to exclusive, uh, you know, online um, services and, and things, um, and, you know, it's, it's an adjustment, but we, we were able to make it. And, um, you know, my wife and I were talking about the, the age in which we're living. And, you know, had this happened, you know, just 30 years ago, it would have been a whole different ballgame. I mean, I, I think it would have been a lot harder on the church then. But now, thankfully, with the technology we have, um, we can still connect with everybody. Um, it, so, is, uh... Go ahead. What's the biggest, maybe, I'm trying to figure out a best way to ask the question, but what's the biggest concern slash fear that you're hearing from the people in your church? Well, I think the um, the, the greatest concern for people is the unknown. Yeah. Um, people are, are fearful about, you know, how long is, is this going to last? They're fearful about um, how widespread is this virus going to be? They're fearful about um, what is this going to mean for us economically in the future going forward. And, um, and you know, sadly, those, those are all, you know, really, they're legitimate fears on the one hand. Um, but, uh, you know, we're called in Scripture to, you know, take our fears to the Lord. Uh, Paul said in Philippians 4, 6, to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving to let your requests be made known to God. And he goes on to talk about how the God of all peace will guard our, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. And so that's what I'm, I'm trying to encourage our congregation with, you know, and as you unpack that verse, I mean, it, it is, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in there to chew on when, when, you know, he says, be anxious for nothing. That's, you know, it seems like how on earth is that possible? But then he gives us what we're supposed to do with our anxieties and our fears, that we take them to the Lord in prayer and supplication. And then he adds that word thanksgiving, which is so important because what that forces us to do is it takes our fears and it takes our anxieties and it and it and, and we bring those to the Lord. But then in the process, how can you be thankful except that you remember the things for which you have to be thankful and the process of remembering the things that you have to be thankful for causes you um, to focus on God's faithfulness in the past. You know, I think about uh, David when he was facing uh, Goliath, you know, his uh, giant literally, but we can look at it metaphorically and say, you know, what are the, the giants that we face? But you know, uh, how, how did he face that giant? Um, he did so with, with faith in the Lord. He was told by, by Saul and others that, 
he was going to be unable to overcome this giant, that he was, David was just a kid, that the giant had been killing people since he was a kid. Um, and David, what did he do? He remembered his past wilderness experience. He hearkened in his mind back to when he was a boy tending his father's sheep. And he said, the lion, when the lion or the bear attacked, I fought and I overcame them and the Lord delivered me from the lion and the bear, and the Lord's going to deliver me now. See, he, he focused on how God had been faithful in the past, and then he allowed that to inform this, this, this giant that he was facing in the present. And so that's how we can handle our anxieties in this. And that's what I'm encouraging my people to do is to be able to, hey, cast your cares upon the Lord, knowing that he cares for you. And remember how God has been faithful to you in the past. And even though this is a time of unknown and uncertainty and nobody can can say for certain how this is all going to work out and what our world is going to look like in in two months, um, we don't know. But we know that uh, we know the Lord, the Lord of this world and uh, and we trust in him. Do you see this as an opportunity for uh, the people of 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 Jesus, um, the light, as we're called in? places in the Bible to um, to respond. Do you see this as good news for us in a way to respond to those who don't know Jesus? Uh, absolutely. I, I, I told my church last Sunday that, uh, in which, you know, by the way, we had probably 80% of our attendance online last Sunday, and then we'll have 100%, of course, this, this week. But I told them that I believe that this is the seeds for for a great awakening in America, for a great revival among the people of God. And it gives us an opportunity now to actually be the church. I mean, we've been saying this for years. The, the, uh, the church has proudly proclaimed that the church isn't a building, right? But it's the people who fill the, fill the building. When we were in our building project, building our church, I, I would often tell our, our people that, you know, the, the church isn't a building. It's not about a building. It's just, you know, it's a vehicle. It's the family car that you put your, your family in. You need the building to, to get you from point A to point B. But what matters is who you're putting in it. And so we, you know, we tell people, hey, it's not about, it's not a building. Uh, and now we get to put our money where our mouth is. And we actually get to, to live out with great faith that the church isn't a building. It's, it's people. And for 2000 years, it's been people uh, loving the Lord, loving his people and, you know, seeking to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I think this is a great opportunity for us, you know, to do that. Do you see, um, I've had this question come up of some of the pastors that I've, that I deal with on a regular basis about uh, religious liberties being infringed on by what Governor Newsom and now Governor Como have uh, initiated a stay a stay at home and and no churches meeting in uh, Seattle has been ordered by the governor as well. Do you do you see an issue with that or is is it all for naught? Um, I understand the concerns um, that uh, you know the when there's an infringing on our civil liberties, as far as the constitution is concerned, that, um, you know, how, how far can they go and, and what will we allow them to do? And, you know, I can, I can totally see and sympathize with that side of the argument, but I can also see very clearly the medical side of this argument. Um, you know, before I was a, a, a pastor, I was a paramedic firefighter. Um, and I come from a medical background. My whole family's in the medical field. My grandfather was a medical doctor. Uh, my mom, a critical care nurse. So, um, you know, I, I understand, uh, you know, about infection control. And I think that with what we're seeing happening in the world and when we're seeing what is in reality a pandemic, and when we live in, you know, a, a a t the times that we're living in, you know, then I think that the church has to, um, you know, the Bible says to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. And I think that we need to exercise wisdom in um, taking appropriate precautions. And, you know, like I said, we, we live with, you know, in a day and age when we enjoy the technology that the church is not hindered from assembling together yes physically but for some very good reasons right now and I, and i think that um 
we can still accomplish uh, our assembling together, um, you know, online for for an appropriate period of time, exercising, you know, social distancing to limit disease and infection spread. I, I get it, and I I actually agree with it, yeah. and I think that I don't I don't see that there is. Um, I don't see that we've been prohibited or, or certainly we've been hindered from exercising our faith. Um, but you know, those, those hindrances are, are things that we have remedies for. So, uh, so I, I just think that, um, you know, I'm thankful that, that, you know, we have the online capabilities that we have for the church to continue to encourage and for people to assemble and for, you know, and and that's where we've been putting. This kind of goes back to your first question for me. We've been putting all our focus in getting everybody connected um, via a number of different platforms, and so that's what I've had my staff working on um, for you know, the past two weeks. Is you know how can we improve the various platforms that are available to us um, uh, via technology to get our people connected, and so. We've been seeing that, and and the, and and you know what, our kids are already living in that world, right? Um, to, to a large degree. It's uh, it's so interesting because you can see God's hand in all of it. Because if the kids are not connected because we're not reaching them through the right channels, then He's kind of given us a remedy for that by force. And also <clears throat> occurred to me as I was hearing you speak about that a part of this is also a personal choice. <clears throat> It's not, you know, it's a personal choice as far as whether you've been hindered or not from worshiping, because you certainly have access online and and in probably a thousand or more different places where you can actually worship, let alone just picking up your Bible and worshiping. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there there is um, there's no doubt that um, you know there 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 have especially in America. I mean, if you're active in missions, you, you realize I, I actually just returned um, from a, from a two week uh, missions trip to the Philippines, right. As all of this was breaking and um, was, was literally back in the pulpit one week before, uh, before everything hit. But, you know, when you're involved in missions, you, you are reminded in a, in a real hurry, how, um, how spoiled we are in the United States. We have a lot of luxuries where mm-hmm. the Word of God is concerned. There are churches where they have one Bible that the entire congregation shares. Yeah. Um, we have we have a Bible in, in every room. Um, we have multiple translations available online. I mean, we, there's a lot of different ways that we can be fed and, and nourished as, a, as a, you know, the people of God. It is uh, such a pleasure to have you on today and be a part of the unity in the in our community here in the sweet spot of just encouraging people and to hear it's interesting and uh, if you listen all day you'll hear the same thing I'm hearing and that is every single pastor I have on cites a different place in the Bible for encouragement which I think is just amazing and awesome so I thank you for your time and I'd really love it if you could just pray us out sure absolutely thank you doc father we do come to you we recognize that you are sovereign um, that there is nothing that happens that takes you by surprise, certainly takes us by surprise, but you were never surprised. And Lord, you have called us to trust in you. You promised that you would never leave us, that you would never forsake us. Um, you said to your disciples, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives to you, do I give to you. You said to them, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so, Lord, that's my prayer for myself, for my, for my uh, congregation, and for, uh, Lord, the, the body of Christ uh, at large. Lord, we, we pray that you would give to us your peace in the midst of this trial. We pray, Father, for our nation's leaders. We pray for those that are making decisions, trying to respond um, to this disease. We pray for loved ones and family members and friends who um, either uh, have the virus or who are anxiously awaiting results of tests from uh, from the virus or who will find out, Lord. Um, and we just pray for, uh, for healing. Um, we pray for wisdom. Lord, we pray for your provision. Father, I want to pray for those that are struggling. 
right now um, financially. Those who already have lost their jobs from this uh, from from this pandemic and the steps that are being taken. Those who will. Lord, you're our you're our provider, and I pray that you would bring uh, healing and provision and uh, recovery. Lord, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. All right. God bless you, Doc.